Elrond, god of the forest, the source of all life. He released his servants, the divine spirits, unto the lands. He spoke, I am that which is giving you life. For a time they brought life and happiness to the forest. Soon the forest was visited by fate. The divine spirits created a beast in their own image. Elrum warned. That is the beast of knowledge, and it will someday bring temptation upon you. Thou shalt not associate with it. The divine spirits so promised, and gave birth to the beast of their own image. Such was man's beginning. Time passed, and the forest was again visited by fate. A divine spirit was seduced by a beast of knowledge, and so the promise to Elrond was broken. The spirit lost its divine power, and by the child of man and spirit, it was gained. This new power threatened Elrond, and so was divided into light and darkness. This is a tale of the kingdom of Gehenna Pali that stretched across these lands long ago. Once upon a time, Prince Menek, son of King Karis, set out with his vassals to hunt in the forest. But in the forest they were enveloped by a thick fog and the prince lost his way. Wandering aimlessly about, he happened upon a marsh from which grew an enormous tree. Thereupon he heard the sound of sobbing, but he knew not from where. He found a maiden sitting all alone. She was weeping by the marsh. I am Alcana. I just buried my mother here in the marsh of Uban, she said. And then she looked up at the prince. He was overwhelmed by her beautiful eyes. The maiden stole his heart that day. It was truly a fateful meeting. Thereafter, the prince made frequent trips into the forest. Undoubtedly, he was paying visits to the maiden. The maiden had a strange power. She could talk to the insects and trees. Before long, there began a terrible rumor that the prince's heart had been stolen by a witch. One day the maiden spun silk from fairy cocoons and wove it into a beautiful cloth for the king. But the brilliance of that cloth cast a shadow upon the kingdom. The king was so enthralled by the fairy silk that he sent his soldiers into the forest where they ravaged for fairy cocoons. The fairies, still in their cocoons, were boiled alive. The king killed them so he could have their silk. The prince pleaded with his father to stop his cruelty, but the king was no longer the man he had once been. Prince Menek was charged with treason and imprisoned in the king's deepest dungeon. He was never heard from again. When the maiden learned of the prince's death, she cursed her fate and lamented the foolishness of man. 
She then cast herself away into the marsh where her mother lay. As she started to drown, a voice from nowhere whispered to her, I am Elrum. I shall grant you your wish. Tell me what you want, said the voice. The maiden told Elrum all that weighed upon her heart. The maiden said, Greed bears destructive knowledge. Its wicked power shall be the end of the forest. All hope is lost. The beasts of knowledge shall never live in peace with the forest. The one light of hope who I so loved has perished at the hands of the beasts. I now go to where my love Menek awaits. Thereupon Elrum spoke again. So you claim that your true love was torn asunder by the greed and hatred of the beasts of knowledge? When light is swallowed up by darkness, I shall unleash ruin upon the land, returning all to the nothingness from whence it came. I have a firm grip upon the darkness in your heart. From that day forward, demons appeared in the forest, terrifying all they came upon. And the kingdom of Gehenna Pali fell to ruin by the swarms of Onibubu, locusts of apocalypse. The demons that haunt the forest now are the beasts spawned by the greed in man's heart. Once upon a time in a faraway village, there lived a woodcutter who always boasted of his strength. It is said that the woodcutter wanted to test his own strength by felling the tallest tree in the forest. He hastily ventured deep into the forest in search. Meanwhile, the forest told the great tree of the woodcutter. The great tree sighed deeply, lamenting his foolishness, and he continued to sigh. And before long, the breath of the great tree became a thick and heavy fog which shrouded the forest. The woodcutter soon lost his way. He grew so tired wandering about that he soon took a short rest. Just then, sweet-smelling fluffs began to float down from above. All who would smell their sweet scent would fall fast asleep. The woodcutter couldn't help but to fall in a deep slumber, and there he lay, snoring great snores in the middle of the forest. For three days he slept. On the morning of the fourth day, a birdman flew down to where he lay. He spoke to him. I'm the strongest, you always say. One fight with me, if you may. But the woodcutter remained fast asleep. You can try to sleep if you must, but I shall wake you with my dust. As he spoke those words, the birdman sprinkled a glistening white powder upon the woodcutter. With that, the woodcutter sneezed a great sneeze and jumped to his feet. The surprised woodcutter shouted, Who on earth are you? I warn you, I am incredibly strong, and I will battle right now. The birdman replied, you can't defeat me, but if you do, we can be friends and I'll share my powder with you. It cures all illness and turns old to new. I got it from the forest people called the Yamu. The woodcutter tried to grab the birdman. But the woodcutter had been asleep for three days. He was too hungry to hold on. With one flap of his mighty wings, the birdman blew the woodcutter all the way back to the village. The woodcutter told the villagers all about the strange birdman, but not a soul believed him. 
From that day on, the woodcutter never again boasted of his strength. divine barriers are dispelled, the power of light and darkness shall usher in the time of gathering. Kumari and Kaya, the guardian deities of light and darkness, shall be released by the twin dragons of Kemu. The chosen ones of light and darkness shall meet, and only then will the accursed ones be granted repose and man shall obtain yet another fruit of knowledge. But it shall bear the seeds of responsibility. The Divine Tree it is the earthly form of Aram, god of the forest. It is said that all in this land began with that tree. But no mortal has ever laid eyes upon it. That is, except for Ghi, prophet of the Nagi. It seems the prophet Ghi saw the great tree in his dreams. It looked just like a huge tree that had been turned upside down. That is why it is also called the Upside Down Tree. Nagi legend says that their accursed fate shall be released when the dragons of light and darkness appear before the divine tree. I am the Nagi prophet, Gi. I see the future through the words of God. I feel before me the one who shall lead our accursed nature to repose. That brave stature. It is just as the hunter who is praised in our legends. That hunter shall be known as... The curse shall not be lifted until we are led to eternal repose. May the protection of Erlen be his. I am the Nagi prophet, Gi. I see the future through the words of God. I bid you welcome to the temple of Kemu, the entrance to the stairs of time. I sense you are a cocoon master of great renown. The stairs of time are the entrance to another dimension. It is said that long ago, during the Age of Chaos, the Chosen Ones of Light and Darkness passed through this gate. The time of conclusion had come. 
Beyond this gate lies an endless forest. The forest harbors infinite strength and undergoes continuous mutations. There a truly powerful hunter, such as a cocoon master, shall gain in rank and honor. The weak, however, shall be devoured. Just what might lie at the end of the forest? Perhaps a state that transcends the self or even eternal suffering? Among the living, no one yet knows. O oh, brave hunter, O oh, mighty cocoon master, tell me your name. For we, the storytellers, will pass on tales of your heroics for generations to come. May the winds of good fortune blow with thee. The Festival of the Father, the sound of winged minions, and so begins the ordeal. The beasts of knowledge, touched by the misery of the Great Father, they release a white beast unto the forest. Its howl is the requiem of soul. White is the beast of fate. Blue is the beast of righteousness. The Divine Spirit defies the Great Father and throws off his shackles. He is now bound to the chains of freedom. The unforgiven, the greedy, and at times like a child, Follow me, I shall remove your shackles and cast them away. Atonement for the flesh. Our mouths are cursed with bitterness. Our hands are quick to spill blood. Our path is ruin and misery. The time of gathering. The young will have nightmares, while the old will see dreams. Before they are redeemed, 
The sun will grow dark, and the moon will turn to blood. Who do you keep within your heart? Who is the child you reflect upon? Man shall obtain yet another fruit of knowledge, but it shall bear the seeds of responsibility. Once upon a time, this forest was a paradise for the divine spirits who served Elrim, god of the forest. The forest people are the incarnation of Mammon, the divine spirit of knowledge. When the divine spirits created man, it was Mammon who bestowed knowledge upon them. But man used his knowledge for the pursuit of ruin. In the end, Gehenna Palae was destroyed because man aroused Elrim's wrath. Bestowing knowledge upon man troubled Mammon greatly. In order to prevent the mortals from causing further destruction, to this day he lives in the forest, protecting it from the foolish ways of man. If you act not in destructive ways, surely Mammon shall bestow upon you valuable knowledge. We are in good hands with you as our cocoon master.